It's Bourbonite. It's a flight fight. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, we well, we have to call this a Van Winkle flight fight. You can't call it a Pappy flight They're fight. They're not all Pappy. Three of them. Three out of the five that are Pappy, and Pappy's just more fun to say. So we're going to call it a Pappy flight. No, we're going to call it a Van Winkle flight. Fight us. Okay, Van Winkle flight. You could fight um, us. <laughs> first, a few things, right? Yeah, so first thing is, these are not all from the same year. These are actually, we've... Accumulated these since 2016, so they're from different years, yes. present day to back to 2016. These have been opened varying amounts of time. The one that's been open the longest may be a little bit over a year old, and the soonest that we cracked one of these open was a, couple, a recent uncorking, yeah. couple months ago. And then third, third, we did not include the Van Winkle Rye in this lineup. I can already hear that question. But where's the Rye? Where's the Rye? Five is our is our max number for a flight, anyway. True, but a, rye, a rye would stick out like a sore thumb. I feel like in this flight. All right, so not like you don't already know what's in this flight, but it's customary. Sarah, what's in this flight? In this flight, we have Old Rip Van Winkle, handmade bourbon. Affectionately known as Rip 10. Which is 10 years old, 107 proof, and 69.99 MSRP. Old Rip Van Winkle Special Reserve. Affectionately known as Lot B. Which is 12 years, 90.4 proof, and 79.99 MSRP. Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve, 15 year, we just call it Pappy 15. At 107 proof and 119.99 MSRP. Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve 20 year. Pappy 20. At 90.4 proof and 199.99 MSRP. And finally, Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve 23 year. Pappy 23. At 95.6 proof and 299.99 MSRP. <laughs> Is it just me or did I say 99.99 99, a lot? 99. Well, we thought Ooh. it'd be fun to include those MSRPs because no one's going to find them at that. But if you were to add up the MSRP of this flight fight, it would be $770 for all the bottles. If Which got, is like crazy because in a lot right. of places you can't even get one bottle for that much. Right. Uh, if you added up uh, average pour at a one a bar for one ounce, it would be around $575. Oh my gosh. But if you were actually to go out on a website and buy a collection of these, you're looking at $14,000. And that's just a So we feel like that quote. deserves a thumbs up down there for us, please. And in fact, if you don't know about the channel, this might be your first time here. We do things like blind flights like this, uncorkings, lists, rankings, uh, lots of lots of stuff like that. Event so, coverage and more. If that's what you're into, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. There's a weird number of people who watch this channel who aren't subscribed. Like, are you afraid to say hi to us? And we won't, We just want to be friends. We okay? just want to be friends with you. All right, Sarah, let's go ahead and get into it. It's business time. It's business time. Sorry, if that's what you're into and if it's business time. that's what you're into. I was just trying to pull in as many Flight of the Concords references, Concords references as possible. We're drinking the same thing at the same time, but we don't know the order. Tis blind. Holy great <laughs> old Batman. Bur old bourbon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oaky, wood tones. Yeah, great. Uh -huh. But it doesn't smell too overdone either. No. For those of you who don't watch the channel very often, usually when we sip something, Ooh. again, with these all being from recent years, these are all, you know, made by Buffalo Trace. And mm -hmm. so with Buffalo Trace distillery, I tend to get, or we both tend to get like a grapey note. Grapey so note, yeah. that makes sense for us. It is present. Yeah, nice, rich. You know, it smells very full. It smells very well rounded. Viscous. Mm, yeah. Uh, you're making me thirsty. Like it's going to have a great mouthfeel. Let's see. Oh, it does. Mm, it does. Mm, mm, nice and rich. Like, yeah. More like a molasses. Sort of also sweet like a molasses. Mm -hmm. A little dryness and a little bit of the oaky tones on the finish, which make me think, but it's not too much, so it doesn't make me think that this is the 20 or the 23. Right. I also get figs. Mm, yeah, I think that falls into figs. that grapey, yeah. you know. But we always come back to bourbon A because it usually gets the short end of the stick the first time around. Yeah. Uh, everything changes on the second pass. Sweeter. Sweeter, less of that grapey note. Yes. It almost smells a little bit drier, if that makes any sense. Sure. Yeah, I would say I think this one's a little bit more savory than it is like that juicy type of note that we were getting on the last like, one. Like strangely, it kind of smells like toast. Toast. I'll, I'll give it to Buttered you. Buttered toast. Whoa, that's different than what the nose is giving Very different. Off. Spicier. It's a little spicy. Than I was expecting. Which is weird that it would be any spice at all. You know, because they're all. These are all weeders, but you know, we do have a couple 107 proofs in here, so that can come across as spice sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm still feeling toast. <laughs> now, the spice on this is sort of like a pepper, which is like. A steak? A steak. A peppery mm. steak. A little bit. A little bit. That's Maybe all I'm saying. a little bit. Grape on the finish. <sighs> There's that grape. It gives me more raisin, I think, than grape. Like a dried, obviously, a dried grape. For anyone who doesn't know what a raisin is, um, I'm getting more dried grape than I am raisin. You know, and I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay. This is 
older. That's it smells older. I'm getting yeah. leather. It almost smells like the inside of a rick house mm -hmm. and a little graham cracker. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little burnt graham cracker. Yeah, like very little, toasted graham cracker. A little barrel char in here. Um, Definitely has some maturity. Yeah. I, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There it is. That is like licking the inside of a barrel. Oh man, I thought I was really, wow. really, really going to enjoy this. And then it fell so quickly. The I first two seconds were like, you know, that taste I get in like an Al Young. Right. And it has so, that 23 in there. Right. But just, then it just went. Sure. It's like it's, tobacco juice. Yeah. At first it's like this wonderfully developed, like amazing little treat. And then all of a sudden it kind of dives off Bitter. a cliff into, yeah, I mean, it basically tastes like burnt wood because it is so oaky. I do not like this finish. But you know what I mean? It gets really dry Yeah. and it gets so oaky. And I think the bitterness comes from like how much of like that oaky char it has impart, like has been imparted on it. Dang, so disappointing. Second sip though. Oh, loving it. Yeah, the first two seconds are like, what? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it is extra oaky in the beginning, but in such a great way. And then it goes to where I don't think it falls into a place of appreciation for an oak lover. I hear you. And I think it's missing some of that like colorful middle colored in with yeah. flavor where yeah. it's just very much all on the oaky side where it goes dry and it loses the mouthfeel and it loses mm -hmm. those like yeah. some of those sweet, you know, other complimentary flavors that kind of make it feel rounded out. It just goes. Oh, this is like in the middle of a couple of things we've already had. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like. it doesn't it doesn't go as far as C did with the oaky, but it's not as restrained as uh, a and B. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more citrus on this one. Yeah, it does have like a citrus. I wouldn't call it astringent, but a little. If you got lemon. pushed farther, it could maybe be a little lemon zest. Hmm. Is this the Goldilocks? Is it? Mm. Ooh, a little tropical there, like a little coconut. It still goes pretty far with the oak. It does. A little more than I care for again. However, I feel like this one maintains the mouthfeel for longer. Yeah. And I feel like it, like I said, is balancing, coloring out with those like other flavors towards the end. Those like kind of mm -hmm. sweet, tropical fruity a little yeah. bit. To where it's not all to one side. It's yeah. not like all in on right. the oak. Sort of like Bourbon C, it's got a sweet spot in the first couple seconds. Now this one does last a little bit longer, but then I feel like it's turn, it goes a little sour somehow. Yeah, and I think that's where that citrus note's kind of playing in mm. a little bit. It is a little bit more of a pucker. Yeah. Oh, this one just smells like a delightful piece of candy. Oh, it does. Just a lightly S cinnamon spice. Like a very syrup forward. Yeah, sir. Um, dessert beverage or something, you know? Yeah. Mm. Lots of caramel in there. Yeah, like a caramel cinnamon latte or something delicious. Sugars from the barrel because it's, you know, it's got a little bit of oak in there. Very sugary. Ooh. And a little fruity. What a little treat you are. Little, well, little, little, little on fruit. On the nose. Little fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's delicious. Hey. It's a little dry though. See, I feel like it's a leftover from C and D. That's very possible. So. I'm trying to just give myself a second. Okay, second sip, you're more acclimated to its flavors and I'm getting a lot more of the sweetness, mm -hmm. sugary, sugar, um, ripe fruit, a little bit of um, some, some a pop caramel. there on the cheeks. Like, not like earlier where like, oh, I think this is 107 and it might be another 107, but it's not as much heat as, or like pepper as bourbon B, but I am feeling something there. You're feeling something? I'm feeling something. Oh, this it's one, happening. this could be the one. It may be. Mm. Oh my gosh. I still want to go back to A, because A always gets the of bad course. deal, right? And we will, and we will, and that's and that's how it works there. So what we do is now we take a little break, we drink some water, maybe eat a few crackers, we let our mouths come back down to room temperature, and we go in for round two, which is where everything is revealed, feelings change, feelings are revealed. Our <laughs> second date with them, basically. Yeah, our, our second date. So we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. But while we wait, we want to tell you about our home on the internet is whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get both of the t-shirts that we're wearing. You're wearing a this long sleeve shirt. This is a long sleeve shirt. one. Uh, the Glen Cairns that we are doing our flight out of today are water glasses. We also have rocks glasses Copitas. and copitas, sweatshirts and hoodies, and more always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. You get first access to barrel picks, events, after the episode exclusives, and more. There you go. All right, uh, we're gonna take about 20. See you guys then. And we're back. We had some crackers. 
We refilled our waters. We took a little break. Now we're ready to go. A little nap. Back in for round two. Grapey, sweet, candy. Syrupy, sugary. Yeah, very goodness. sugary. Yeah. But it smells so good. This is one of the better noses. I, feel I like. know. Maybe like this and E. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant. And there's that mm, grape. I really like that. Yeah. Enough barrel influence and. Um, I think the proof is right on this one. Like all around, I'm really liking A a lot. Yeah, A is very reminiscent of <laughs> the people who make it, Buffalo Trace. Yeah, Familiar signature and... Buffalo Trace, yeah. Another good nose mm -hmm. contender though, yeah. right here, yeah. This one is just a little bit deeper, you uh -huh. know? It's, a it's, little more. It's A, but. I hear you would, it's got older, a little bit more of like a maybe? savory, yeah, just a little bit more maturity. Yeah, like a little savory aspect of it. It's See nice. if I get that same peppery steak on this one. Mouthfeel, mouthfeel, mm. mouthfeel. Yeah, it, this has more of the um, tobacco a little in it without it getting obnoxious. <laughs> right, it's not going any way, which way, without too much. Without being in much. your face about it. Right, without being in your, without being <laughs> annoying. Love the, I love the finish. Just say that. Mm. Love that finish. Very nice. Now this is smelling like cedar closet. We have entered. Yeah, a, like an old an old chest that a blanket store chest stored. that have been storing al Afghans. Afghans and Afghans. Other heirlooms. Heirlooms. <laughs> very Woodford. <laughs> All the mispronounced. Very Woodford words. There is a part of it that I can really appreciate, and I think. 100%. I, I, I think I said this on C the first time. It was like, you know, that nose you get on Al Young, which is like that older part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but then I remember that not translating to the taste. So let's see. Yes. 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 No, 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 Not as much. Not as much. No. No. Mm -mm. Oh, it's gone. Bitter. It's completely bitter. gone. Completely gone. Bitter char ash. Ooh, no. Dry. After you've taken a spoonful of medicine and it's just like all that's left in your mouth at the end, you're like. It's like you ate something out of that chest now. It's just too oaky for it's me. Too, we've kind of discovered I'm more of an oak fan than you are, yeah. but this isn't that same feeling. This is yes, oak, yay, but it's kind of went a little green. Uh -huh. So no, this is a sweet one. This is sweeter, but still with that little bit of that oaky. This old feels like it's wood. It's sweet without the viscosity. It's a little thinner type of sweet. It still gets a little of that syrupy, brown sugary sweetness, but I'm still also getting a hint of the oak that I get on C. Brown sugar oatmeal. That's what it I'm does getting. kind of smell like brown sugar oat. Ooh, that sounds delicious. It does, <laughs> I would love some, thank you. Lemon that we said in the first round, but also some tea. But definitely unsweetened tea. Little pop a little pop of honey with that lemon. It's almost like a bordering like a hot toddy. Yeah, this one also gets that bitter element. Like yeah. some, so some bitters have been squirted in that hot toddy, which shouldn't shouldn't belong in there. Oh, now yeah. that I've gone back to A, I like this nose, but it's I think like I liked A's better. A, B, E. But things change sometimes when we go to the- Things change, Mox. Literally the A, B test, mm -hmm. and they do change, Mox. That it's like that typical- Yes, we said signature Buffalo signature Trace. Signature Buffalo Trace, yeah, this- shares that. It does, but this goes a little bit more syrupy brown sugar. I think. It does. It's no, there is mm. nothing that is objectionable. But a bit of objectionable? Mm -hmm. it, it, <clears throat> excuse me. It is sugary sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. I, I think the only thing about this one. Good middle ground, maybe. A very, yeah. I do think this one is mostly the sweet, and I'm feeling like that might mean that it's a little bit younger. It's not being rounded out with those, like, more mature flavors that we were talking about on A and B, you know, a little bit of the oak influence, mm -hmm. the savory yeah. and whatnot. I think that it might be, but I still think it's great. Like I still think it's very tasty. Mm -hmm. I guess it's that time though for us to figure out what we really think. Huh? It is that time. This is where we leave you all and we start A, B testing things back to back that were not back to back before. So we can see how they compare. Uh, if you are a patron. Then you can actually see this quite behind the often, scenes part. Yeah, we end up showing this part in what we call another round of Chat and Sarah, which is a Patreon exclusive. We also want to thank our patrons for helping us get a few of these bottles back here. It's because of Patreon that we're able to do such an extravagant. You're and the let's best. face it. You showy flight fight. Like, let's be honest, this flight fight is disgusting. A little bit of a flex. Like, this flight fight but is needed, obnoxious. needed to be done. It needs to be done. So this is where we'll leave you. We'll be back for results time. Hey!
Okay, results time. Now, we should say... <laughs> Before we ruin our reputation. Yes, that I feel like when we were doing the A-B testing that we picked our first based on what we were describing as more of the... Like signature Buffalo signature Trace. Signature Buffalo Trace profile. I mean, I hear what you're saying, Chad, but I think that there's also a conversation that's going on out there of like, this is the most sought after bourbon in the world. Also the most overrated. Right. And so is it worth it? And like, where's the line of diminishing returns? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to buy a bottle of this, if you can find one, if you can find it on secondary, if you have that much money, right? Right. Like, should you? And also this would only be fair if we were tasting all from the same year. This order is basically what we're saying could change if it was a different year's release because, you know, they do shake out differently. But things change. Enough disclaiming. Let's go ahead and reveal our last place, which Which we both picked. I actually think that we have like the exact same order. Yeah, we do. Um, which rarely happens. Especially um, with a five topper like this. Right. It's it's very unusual. So in last place, we put Bourbon C. Bourbon C is... I called it. You did call it. You were right. It's the 20 year. Pappy Van Winkle, 20 year. I thought that this tasted like wet barn wood that had been sitting outside and getting musty. I really feel like that we got an off year of 20. I think we did too. Yeah. This smells Because it's the same stuff from sour our, and from a our little... uncorking. Fourth place, second to last, we both put bourbon D. Which must be... Yes. is? 23 the 23 year. year. I was... I know this about myself. Again, admittedly, I don't like that much oak. But if you do, then don't listen to me. It was a lot. mm. It was a lot, but also the wrong type. Hmm. Okay, third place for both of us is Bourbon A. And Bourbon A is... Oh. Whoa. The Lot B 12 year. Which, to be fair, we went, if you, I don't know if you saw the Patreon part or not, but we did do the back and forth whatever between a b and e mm-hmm. it i did have to go back and forth between yeah. them several times and it was close to figure yes. out the ranking so all of these three are definitely i mean really neck and neck d c b and a are all ones that i would like to drink again the only one of these that i would not like to drink again it's our was, particular bottle of 20 years. was our particular <laughs> bottle of 20 year so but we I'm, have the 15 year and the 10 and year. and the 10 year but you know what i honestly don't mind that chad because i feel like the 10 year is the easiest to get of all of them and we should point out the they're both the 107 proofs Oh, is anyone anyone shocked? shocked? Is anyone shocked? No. I think that, especially with a weeded profile, a little bit of a higher proof really helps bring out those extra flavors that are in there. Yeah. That help shine through that, just that sweetness. So So let's find out if the 15 year or the 10 year at 107 was our preference. Let's go with our first place, which Which is- Which was E. Bourbon E is- Ah! The 15. The 15 year. And I said when we uncorked these, I was like, I'm pretty sure this one's my favorite. I feel better. (laughs) I can say this. I was like, I'm going to say that the 15 year is my preferred bottle, but I can't say it for sure because I've never tried them all together. Right. And now I can say it for sure. The 15 year, which makes our second place. There it is. The Rip rip 10. 10. So we picked the 107 proofs first, but we picked the longer aged 15 year, which I guess I'm as happy as I could be with Mm -hmm. these results. Um, It's fine. Cool. But as we said, the blind tasting between A, B, and E, lot B12, the 10, and the 15 15. year, was all very close. Yeah, it was. So if you can't get your hands on a 15, definitely go for the 10. Go for the old rip 10. Don't consider a uh, rip 10 or a lot B12 as a consolation prize. No. Because it's not. It's It's delicious. It's very close to the, the 15 year as we just showed. So, and I will say again, yeah. delicious for MSRP. When we start getting into secondary, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You live your own life. You save that money for BTAC, in our opinion. In my opinion, that's what I would do. WLW or George C. Stack. Uh, that's what we'll say. Wait, and that's, that's a different episode, and different it's already episode. out there. So It is. Uh, and that's also where we will leave it. I think so. Yeah, there you go. This was uh, great. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so. Come on over. The bourbon is fine. You can click right up here to do so. There are suggestions of other videos, and they're right down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. <sighs> Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more bourbon. Drink more bourbon.